wait for it. Mm-hmm. Hello, and welcome to episode 32 of Tangents Entertained. Uh, this week, we're talking about a film that's just come out recently, which is Blade Runner 2049. Uh, to help me discuss the film and what we thought of it, I've got Alex with me. Good evening, Alex. Good evening. How you doing, mate? You okay? You well? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Good, good. Good stuff. And making a very welcome return uh, since he last talked about Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2, it's John. Good evening, John. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Good evening. Evening. How you been? You well? Yeah. Yeah, all right, thanks. Excellent. I very much enjoyed that chat on Guardians, and now I've, I've got it on Blu-ray already. There we go. So, yes, good to see you anyway. Good to have you back. Um, so, gents, we're going to talk about Blade Runner 2049. Uh, we've all obviously, obviously seen it and, and had our thoughts. We talk about the film generally for a few moments, and then when we start getting into spoiler territory, we'll let everyone know, and uh, we'll give you a warning before we go and, and delve right in deep. So... Yeah. We'll kick off now with just thoughts. Um, John, as our returning hero, what was your thoughts of Blade Runner twenty forty nine? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't, uh, hero is probably not the best description for me. <laughs> Old chap. Never mind. Um, I have. I have to give a heads up here. I am a very, very big Blade Runner fan. Um, good, and I actually, much good I, company. I actually bought um, the original for the fifth time, or maybe even the sixth time. Uh, recently um, on uh, my Apple TV 4K. I wanted to see it um, before the film, just to remind myself of the, you know, any any minutiae of the, of the plot. And I watched it in 4K as well, with motion smoothing turned off, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit of, a, bit of an ob- obsessive when it comes to the film. Uh, and my, my first uh, thoughts were always going to be, when I went into the cinema, is this going to be completely spoiled? Mm. Are they, they going to completely... Yeah cock it up like um Ridley Scott's done with most of his other films recently <laughs> so yeah. um that was it's like, like you know, cough, I, cough, the alien trilogy <laughs> yeah cough, yes. I, mean, I, I i uh i i i really enjoyed it that's the first my my first thought but obviously there's lots to talk about but that's, i really did enjoy it and, it and few what a relief yes i think that's fair alex yourself um yeah i mean i'm i'm a big blade runner fan too um i'm not actually allowed to watch it in the house um, cause my wife, um, did it in a media studies course. And so she, she has seen it so many times that, that you know, seeing it again is just too much. Um, <laughs> but, but so I kind of sneak, sneak moments to watch it when I'm up in my, up in my study. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm a big Blade Runner fan and I did the same. I watched, I watched the, um, uh, Blade Runner, uh, the, uh, final cut, trying to remember yeah, which one, one. yeah mm. final cut not the uh director's cut and um yeah so i so i watched that watched that recently as well and uh, for exactly the same reason to kind of um put my mind at rest um and i think this this one is a worthy um successor to that so um yes yeah, very enjoyable uh very immersive uh, very rich um mm. very long but we'll we'll come on to that. <laughs> but it is but it is good, and, and so I, I, t- I thoroughly recommend it. If you haven't seen it already, you need to see it now, and and not listen to this podcast because we'll ruin it for you. Eventually. That's yeah. true. Yeah, we will yeah. completely ruin it. Yeah, go just, yeah go watch it first, and then come back and listen to this afterwards. So yes, yeah. um, I mean I'll put my two pains worth in very quickly before we go into spoilers. Um, uh, it's interesting you talked about seeing the film. Uh, uh, the first film before this and you watched the final cut um i think it's interesting because famously um the first film wasn't liked by the producers and they inserted this kind of dream a uh, happy ending at the end of the film where it's sean young and harrison ford in a car saying that everything's fu- are, are wonderful and yeah. they're fine driving away in the sunset which is ridley scott's final cut which is he says his, his definitive one is basically them both escaping his house. And then um, this is the first time I, I forget names. Um, the uh, detective Elmos says she won't live as, but who does? And then, yeah, that's right. And, and it cuts screen. So I think it's quite important. I think, yes. Um, to talk about that because in, in the, in the build up to this coming out, uh, the director of this was very adamant that he was following on from the final cut and not from the theatrical cut as well. So that's quite important when you're in uh, and when we talk about the film and and the plot i think it's quite important on on that difference as well about the film does it that, does it matter that does that matter though surely well i, th- 
I think it does because, like, obviously, we can't go into spoilers now. We'll talk about that a bit more. I think when we go into it, but they, there was something when we were they were doing the press of the film and the sort of the trailers come out and doing that interviews for it he was very it's a Dennis Villeneuve as the director of 2049 he was very adamant that he was following on from the final cut I think even Ridley Scott who produced it was kind of like oh you know this is about you know this is based on the final cut as well because I think of that ending and we'll talk about that why that is as well I don't think it's just the ending I think it's there were a lot of problems with the theatrical cut um mm. and I think it you know it it was um poorly done but also then you had the um, uh, voiceovers as well, which just yes. completely ruined the atmosphere of it. Um, and I think, in, I think in your, in your opinion, Alex, no, they ruined the atmosphere. <laughs> it's, not an, it's not an opinion. It's true. Um, <laughs> oh, it's getting tense already. Um, but, but the, that, but the thing is, it's kind of, that's, that's the thing. It's kind of them distancing themselves from what that was originally and saying, no, no, we've done, we've done better versions now. Go with those. <laughs> A no, bit like George Lucas. Yeah, um, I think that, that, that was yes. the man I was thinking of whilst yeah. we were talking. That, that <laughs> yeah, went well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's what made them worse, though, isn't he, really? Somehow bizarrely, but yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just very quick on the film, yeah, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. I loved it. Um, I thought it was very, very good. Um, I didn't see it as a sequel. You know, it, it is a sequel, but like it just continues the same world. It's more of a continuation, I felt, of more than a sequel that's that's what i thought of it when i come out I yeah don't know if it, it it's makes too, sense but um, i think i think the date gives you too but the hint you know this is 30 years later yeah and, and and so you know it can't just run on um and i think i think um they do a good job of um filling in some of that gap that 30 year gap which you know we didn't really see in in the original blade runner um we get to see it 30 years later and then we can see th some things have changed um some things haven't but that's that's all right you know we get to see that as well so um yeah no it's a great film i, I, I yeah. thoroughly recommend it um I, I i was also scared as well before it came out because for years i'd always wanted a sequel to it and i'd always kind of like i'd like to up sequel ideas in my head and thought oh what would they ever do if it ever happened and that sort of thing as well and that and then when they announced it i got very very scared because i think because you want something so much and then it happens like oh no do i actually really want this as well but be um, careful what you wish for yeah exactly yeah but curiously the more and more i tried to stay away from the trailer as much as i could although i didn't really but you know the more i, th I saw of it and the way they were talking about it the more sort of <clears throat> calm and the more sort of uh, relaxed i was and i wasn't scared going into it at all it, it also it, it got the good reviews as well i'd say as well but like i had a calmness going into it that i don't think i would have had if i hadn't seen more of the trailers there was there was a chap on twitter who was very concerned about the design um who i think a game designer the guy that's um alex someone who's designing um that pixelated 2d scroller that was showcased on the um xbox um e3 showcase i can't it's called now which is mm. kind of a blade runner 2d scrolly thing and he's done a lot of work on the other design oh that's gonna bug me that if i don't know that so i'm probably shouting out right now <laughs> listening to this he but he i follow him on twitter and he was saying how concerned he was about the design and how um the beauty of the design of the first film and, and the whole world that was created so hung together so well and the aesthetic and he he found the aesthetic you know villeneuve's aesthetic a bit disturbing a bit worrying uh, we'll come on to that later on, but I think mm. I think I think he didn't need to be worried. I think I think um, it's been put together very well. But we'll we'll come on to that. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it was the thoughts before the film came out. I just remember him thinking, "Oh, it doesn't look as nice," and I think he's been proved wrong actually. But we'll come over to that in a second. Mm. Yeah, something that we'll try and touch on on this section, like on the non-spoilery part before we move on, is just the box office. It's it's um. It hasn't perhaps done, done the numbers that, that the studio was hoping for. And it's been called a, a bomb, I think, at the moment. But I don't think that's quite fair. Because at the moment, it's on 200 million, I think, it's made against a budget of 150. And it's not been released in China or Japan yet as well. Yeah, so I think the, the measure of success was based on uh, you at the, the US um, opening weekend. Mm. Um, and I think I think it performed poorly in uh, you know in on that weekend, 
Um, but but I think it wasn't particularly bad. It was just it perform, performed worse than expectations. And I think that's a bit of a problem with a film that has high expectations, but also really high cost. You know, it's like everyone's kind of got bated breath to see whether or not they'll they'll make their money back. Um, but they will, and they have. You know, if you look at the gross um, uh, sales, yeah, it's around two hundred million now worldwide, and it's still got China and, and um, Japan to do. I think it'll make its money back on on and um, DVD and all TV, of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, uh, it's, it's just, absolutely yeah. fine. I think it's more just. I think it's more about expectations. So yeah. I think people wanted it to be, um, you know, a bl- a huge blockbuster, and I don't think that's the type of film it is. I think no, it's, it's not a robust really, film. I think it's no. done really well. Um, so I, I think it's just it just how about how those expectations were managed. That was all. Well, the trouble is that the expectations of a Hollywood is something like a Boss Baby. Yeah, um, yeah. which says a lot says a lot about about um, people's taste really more than anything else. I mean, this is a two hour forty minute rated eighteen science fiction film. So is it eighteen? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, it's rated R, is it? In the US thing is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dark. It's, it's, it's probably fifteen here, I imagine. Oh, I think I'm trying, I'm trying to think what, what, what would give it that rating. Probably, I don't know. It's, it's a bit of nudity in it, isn't there, as well, and that sort of thing. But it's not that much bad language in it, though, is there? Really, I guess adult themes. I think but, it's mainly just the um, the, the there is just a lot more, a bit more gore than than the fifteen would have allowed. Yeah, I think I think they kind of you know they wanted that but maybe they didn't need that and if they'd have gone down the numbers would have been even better so i think it's just it's just you know but he didn't want to be he didn't want to sacrifice um you know compromise he wanted to he wanted to do the the film that he wanted to do and and that meant it cost him his rating basically so oh, fair play to fair play to denis to, to mm. yeah well, i mean just- Looking at Boss Baby, by the way, I'm just looking at box office for Boss Baby. And interestingly, box, Boss Baby, so on opening weekend, it, it grossed um, 50 million, which is obviously the measure of success. But mm-hmm. when you look at its gross value over um, the time, so worldwide, it's it's now made 2 billion. Boss huge, Baby has. Yeah, huge, huge amount worldwide. <sighs> In the US, it's made 174, uh, five uh, million. So it's this is this is you know these are serious numbers on a 100, 125 um, million uh, uh, million budget. So so you know, I think I think it could do something, but it won't get to that level. Um, I hope that they they feel like it'll be a success because uh, you know we'll like to see some more. And famously, the first film obviously didn't make much. It was a bit of a dud when it came out. It did make a lot of money when it came out. It was really only the word of mouth, and it became a cult hit really after after the first one came out, didn't it? It didn't make yeah, much right. box office at all. No, exactly. I think, all in all, before we move on to spoilers, we can all say we like this film quite a lot. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. So please yeah. go if you haven't already. I'm I'm yes. actually holding back a little bit, chaps, but you know that that'll come. <laughs> No, I think it's hard to talk about it without spoiling it. We can talk like in this bit as well. We can't go too mad in this bit. No, that's fair enough. Okay, okay. so we're going to move on now, and we're going to go into massive spoiler territory, t- talking all about the film. If you haven't seen it, go and see it and come back. And we're going to go spoilers in five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so chaps, first thing we get in this is Brian Gosling's character K versus Dave Batista's. Um, what do we think of that as the start of the film and as a scene setting? So should we talk about the black um, text before that? So the, oh, the, yes. That's a very good point, actually. We should talk about that. Do you, should I run through that very quickly? Well, um, I don't I don't have it in front of me, but I think I think that the, the um, if you've got it in front of you... No, but I can kind of memorise it because I'm sad. Uh, All right, go on, uh, go on then. Uh, uh, John, do you know fairly quick... Fairly well or not, or should I go on? You go for it. Yeah. So obviously yeah. this is 30 years, obviously, after the events of the first film. So the Tyrell Corporation, which was the focus of the first film, that uh, first made the replicants, went uh, bankrupt. Uh, I think after the events of the first film, there's also been uh, the whole 
civilization has basically suffered a massive depression, hasn't it, as well? So there's been like a breakdown of uh, of civilization, hasn't there, as well? Over yeah. The years so as well. basically, all of the um, uh, basically all of the soil became in pretty much infertile. Mm. Um, uh, all around about the same time so so that kind of immediately depressed everything um and so it talks a little bit about the um replacing the um tyrell Co corporation which would bust um and then it talks a little bit about um wallace and and yes. you know, his his synthetic i think alex Tyrell's first mistake was was moving away from crisps and going into replicants so um <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was yeah. all the crisps that did it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but but so, yeah, so that's it. So and and basically, what they're saying is Wallace has bought up to rail and has restarted mm. the program, hasn't it? And also, I'm right in saying that the previous models of replicants were basically outlawed or decommissioned when they all retired, as yes, you would call that's it. Right, retired. And then his ones have, and then his ones have been brought in. So what they're trying to do at the moment is they're trying to basically round up all the old versions is it is a nexus is it nexus 8 they're called yeah it's, so nexus nexus um is it six so nexus six else. yeah to go <laughs> nexus six was the ones in the blade right now yeah nexus uh seven um is something we'll talk about later on possibly rachel and then um uh, nexus eight is his current line and so he goes through um, and any any and he his he, Brian Gosling's um, Brian Gosling's uh, role is um, still a Blade Runner, so his job is yeah. still to find the uh, the older versions, um, and he still has to do that. Have you mm -hmm. chaps seen the the anime prequels that were released between? No, the, no, the, I've heard about these, but they're I've not quite seen good. Them. No, they're, they're very like, good. They're worth a watch. Probably you probably enjoy them more now you've seen the film actually. But they they go through the process of the um, how it all happened. Okay. How the um the big, the big sort of um, apocalyptic life changing thing happened. Um, oh, I watched that. It's, it's called the Black. Sorry, uh, John. Yes, yeah, so I, I think there's a good Nexus, Nexus sort of Nexus Six. Yeah. I'm trying to remember now. I think there's a good Nexus Six um, replicants that that actually are like seen as freedom fighters or terrorists that set off the big EMP pulse that wipes all data records. Mm. Um, it's worth. I mean, the, the last one, the, the longest one, is is be made by a very famous anime director or writer or, or, or um artist you know it was on request of dennis villeneuve that he did that it's very very good it's worth a watch um and is a good very good um <coughs> sort of um not homage as such but very good sort of treatment uh, in the lead up to it mm -hmm. um so if you yeah I mean, it gives you a bit more detail about about the universe between 2019 and 2049 um, oh, cool. And I'll have to it watch kind it. of gives you give the motivations of why the Nexus Six did what they did. Mm. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I must watch that. I, I just must have missed that. But um, I missed sure that as well. Be, yeah, I'm pretty sure, sure watch that before we did the film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be on the Blu-ray though, so that's um, yeah. worth watching. Sorry, yeah. So I think the first revelation that this film does is the fact that K is a replicant, um, the Ryan Gosling character. That took me by surprise because it wasn't hinted at at all. Was I on alone with that, or did you guys guess that as well? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect it. No. Um, I like the fact they use K as in Philip K. Dick. That's quite a nice little um, egg yeah. Easter egg. Um, no, I mean, I, I did wonder. I did wonder how they were going to make it uh, make him interesting, Ryan Gosling, um, because he's quite a deadpan normally, isn't he, old Ryan? Um, so uh, I do think he fit the role very well, actually. I know some people have complained about mm. him, but I thought he was, he's kind of taking his treatment of, of um, Drive, the way he sort of acted in Drive, that sort of slightly deadpan, but sort of half smiling look to him. Um, so it's, I think it's a clever idea. It, it, it helps with the, the main storyline of the film, doesn't it? And the tension it builds up towards the end. Um, yeah. yeah, it does. It's kind of... Yeah, it had to be that way, didn't it? You're right. Yeah, yeah it's key. For, it's key for this storyline. Um, yeah. But it it was surprising because it's it's out there straight away from the from the start. So, mm. yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, it, it works. It's just it's, <coughs> it's, it's a little bit of a kind of oh, okay. Um, and How's then this going to work? Yeah, and then and yeah. so then you um you watch it go well. Hmm. 
I wonder, and then and then you see how it how it plays out. So, um, yeah, I know it's, it's a bold move, but it, it kind of it works. I mean, so we're talking that. I mean, we we talk about a lot linking it to the other film. So we will go into plot now. I think to kind of talk about the plot now and, and then go into themes. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, so Ryan uh, Gosling character K meets uh, Batista's character. Um, Sapper, who's a I think it's called. Sapper, yeah, Zappa Morton, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Who's a replicant who has basically got his own little farm outside of the main city. And he they have a fight, basically, don't they, as well? Um, Is it a, it's a protein farm, isn't it? It's yeah, a protein right. farm, yeah. Yeah. So they... So he basically gets in and is it the way it's filmed I think is interesting because there's a shot of, of of Batista doing his work in the protein farm and then he sees basically like um K's car come in and it's kinda of like he knows what's gonna happen, he's kind of accepting it. I don't know if you felt that what I did, kind of uh, the way it was shot, it's kinda of like uh, like he knows what's coming. Did you find that or am I up the wrong tree there? I mean, there could there could be um, hidden um, hidden uh, context here, and maybe he had a a message from the the group that's mentioned mentioned later on in the film, the sort of resistance group that's mentioned later on in the film. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, maybe they contacted him and let him know he was on his way. I mean, maybe he just saw. Yeah. Um, He's to have to have a presence or to have a visit from someone in this back end of the, of, of nowhere is so unusual that he thought there yeah, must be something something must be up. Better go and sort this out in his weird sort of diving suit outfit he's in, which must have been yeah. a pain in the arse to take off just, just for a visitor. That's what I thought. Yeah. Ugh, what a hassle, taking all that off. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and that first fight is actually really good, isn't it, as well? Because you can't look at the size of them both and you think, well, how on earth can Ryan Reynolds win? Ryan Reynolds, sorry. How on earth, uh, uh, how on earth can well, Ryan Don't make win? that mistake too many times. You went like that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, uh, I'll, I'll just say K, it's easier. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I do think like over their comparative sizes, you do think it's like how can Kane sort of beat him? And then obviously I, that yeah, fight shows you that he's a replicant. So yeah, it's establishing it's establishing character, isn't it? With, with the, yeah, the, what what he can take and what sort of strength he has and so on. Yeah, that's right. It, but it's 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 an interesting way to start a movie, really, if you think about it, because it does it does a little bit of job a job of um, world setting. But yeah. really, it just throws you into because you see him dry, riding, um, uh, flying over the farms, the landscapes, and, yeah, and the and the the solar collectors and stuff like that. Um, but then it really doesn't give you a, any more glossing. It goes straight into that scene. So it's, oh, it's like a very important place, place, though, isn't it? It's yeah, a very it, important place mm. because of the whole story starts from there. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So he finds the bones, doesn't he? He after. Like after the fight, and he kills Batista. Because Batista uh, says, "You know, he says you've never witnessed a miracle." Is what he says, doesn't he? As well, when they're fighting. Yeah. yeah and then right. after, then after he's retired, them, you know, he's he he burns the place. He's looking uh, like a really looking at the place, and he finds the bones. And mm. um, I think we can say it just straight now. I think the bones belong to Rachel. Yes. So it's Rachel who's. She's obviously died near her bones as well. Um, I kind of got that straight away. Uh, I didn't get the fact that uh, the case of Replicant at first, that threw me, but I guessed quite quickly that this was going to be Rachel. Only because Sean Young wasn't really in the promotionals for this, and I was thinking, well, if she's not in the film, she's got to be dead, hasn't she? So I kind of guessed it was her. But I don't know what you guys thought of that at all, Alex. Well, there's, there's a long, there's a long, there's, sorry, sorry, no, sorry, Alex. Uh, there's a long his, long history of, of Sean Young's fall from grace in terms of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and quite unfairly in some respects. Um, mm. Although there's always two sides to the story, and it's interesting that, to have her involvement at all in that film, considering how she kind of left uh, under a cloud back in the sort of mid to eight, mid nineties. Yes. Um, what do you well, think, Alex? Anyway. Oh well, uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I, I. Um... Because it was thirty years on, I really just let it play out because I I didn't want to. And the thing is, I knew that we were going to get Deckard at some point, but apart from that, I just left it, you know, left it alone to see where they took took me. So I think it was it was um, it was interesting to see what they what they what they did there. But yeah, I didn't I didn't think oh the bones are clearly of of Rachel that didn't come in until much later. Uh 
I mean, what I think is interesting is that it starts with a lot of plot, doesn't it, as well? Like, at the start of the film, you have to fight. It sets up the plot strands very, very quickly. But then after that, the pacing is, I think, a lot more leisurely after that, and it's more methodical. I mean, it's two hours 40, but I was never bored, and I never wanted to go to the loo at all. So, um, so and I thought the pacing was absolutely fine. I love intelligent sci-fi that's allowed to breathe so i had that but alex pacing for you well okay i, I can see your face alex i can see your there's a slight <laughs> difference of opinion here just, you, just a um, picture folks you might say you might say methodical i, I would probably say lethargic because oh, really? it, so? it's really the thing is i i love the fact that it, it you have time to breathe you have time to get yourself into the um into the world um but then you get onto plot and, and it just, it did move, but it was like someone was just out for a stroll. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it, was, it kind of just took its time and, and sure that was the time that they wanted it to take, but I kind of wish they'd have moved it along a little bit because it, it you know, it really did feel at certain parts while I loved being in, engrossed in the world, you know, scenes were just, too long for not any real reason so you know and 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 there are particularly some of the later scenes um you know there, there's 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 moments where things happen and then there's um you know we're talking like tens of seconds of of, of breathing time and and that's it's, all, it's almost Lynch, lynchian in, in its length sometimes isn't it? yeah and it, 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 it the thing is it's not that i really needed a wee or anything it was just that I thought, well, no, I get the point now. You've made the point. You've made it really clearly. And you, when you make the point, move on, because otherwise I'm going to start getting annoyed, you know, with it. Right, right, right. So, so uh, Villeneuve... Sorry, go on, go on, John. You, you yeah. touch and balance us. There's a version... Of, uh, in, in, on Twitter, there's a thing called mansplaining, isn't there, where you... Where you are very patronising about something, about a lady's explanation. So you mansplain for. I'm going to Villeneuve splain now. Right. <laughs> um, I he has a very unique, oh, a very identifiable style, and you can see that from um, Oblivion, and you can see it um, a tad from Perhaps Arrival. Although I think the pace is very different in those two films. He's he's obviously very aware of the um, the uh, legacy of Blade Runner and how how it should be treated, mm -hmm. and I think he's. He, he can demonstrate good pace in films, but I thought Arrival was very well paced and a great yeah, film. Yeah, I agree. However, an Oblivion, who, which I actually, oh, again, I think wasn't a major success, I quite enjoyed, despite Tom Cruise being in the film. Um, I, be, mainly because I thought the, the design in that was lovely and the, the landscapes and so on in Oblivion. Um, I think he's he, he can go either way and he's gone the landscapey, long drawn out look. And I'm pretty sure that when Villeneuve um, directs the, the reboot of Dune, He'll go the same way in that terms of pace because Dune's the original Dune's a very slow paced film in that respect. Yeah. And I imagine he'll do this because he's perfect for that sort of film with the you know the the, the sand and the yeah, landscapes that's and that. Right. I think he yeah that's his style. And I think as he matures, maybe he'll understand that some people don't like that pace and that he'll he'll pick and choose. Um, but this is very much a Villeneuve landscape. Let's show off. You know, let's try and get an Oscar for cinematography type film or anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. And I think, yeah, it will piss some people off. Um, I think it helped that the soundtrack was so good, oh, personally. Fantastic. Yeah. And we, we could always chat about that in a second, but uh, yeah. I can see why some people would find it the the pace ponderous. I can see exactly why. I left the cinema thinking my watch had gone wrong because I thought it was an hour long late. My watch, I didn't realise it had gone on for an extra hour. So yeah. I, for me, I didn't feel the pace. It didn't bother me. No, because I like Villeneuve's style, but I can completely understand what you what you're saying there, Alex. Completely. And if your yeah. wife has to do, if your other half has to do this for me, just to lose, she's buggered, isn't she? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally could watch it for six hours. That that if this film was six hours, it'd be perfect for me. That's fine. I I just I just adored it. I love the world. Like obviously, you know, like I love the world that it creates. Obviously, it links a lot to the other film. We'll talk about that. In a second as well by the way it links in as well and um, it's just i love films that like 
I think I talked about this before about like it just immerses you in that world where you don't where you're just like you feel like you're there and you're kind of like in like in with them so like something like Lord of the Rings does that really well mm. and you feel like you're actually there if that makes sense and Avatar kind of does it although it's not as good um, Avatar is an inferior film to these but like yes it, it does a thing of creating it where you feel like you're actually there like in that world and this is what it felt like to me it felt like the way it was filmed as well and like shot it felt like you was actually like there so he's in the street and it's raining in the street and he's eating you feel like you're eating with him or you feel like you're there watching them do it that makes sense it really so, immersed... so many films have been inspired by that the original Blade Runner style and, and, yeah. and aesthetic um so it, it's obviously uh, Blade Runner was, was similar in that respect it really was influential and that's why you're so immersed probably because it was a forerunner really yeah no, absolutely yeah but it, it just yeah. it just did this thing where it just you know I forgot I was in the cinema that make oh, that's what films do I know but did you see it sorry did you see it start in a standard uh, pre uh, presentation or IMAX uh IMAX yeah well, there you, it go. Was, you, saw it, you saw it in the best way yeah it just it's just I loved it and it just it really did make you feel like you was in there like in that world and you was part of it as well that's what I loved I think for me I I, I agree I just wish there was a bit more plot like if they if they mm -hmm. literally had just given because there's so many parts of it that I think oh if you could have just fleshed that out just a little bit more like I know we're meant to be left questioning things and oh, I get that. Mm. But but you know, we could have seen more of the um Wallace Wallace uh, uh uh arc, you know, or 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 other bits, you know, there's there's sort of there's definitely play there that we could have seen. Um so yeah, no, but I mean I think the world in itself was was um amazing as mm. always. And I love the when when they go um when they start going through the city and you start seeing the Atari logo um, yeah. and, and all of the, and obviously that was one of the key parts of the film was, you know, it didn't shy from, you know, capitalism and stuff in the original. I mean, there's been yeah. a few, there's been a few comments about why is Pan Am still there and why is Atari still there when both companies are obviously gone. Mm -hmm. I think there's been some talk to say that um, we're, what we're seeing here is not um, our future, but a, an alternative future. And there's also rumours to say that they're going to be linking the world of Blade Runner with the world of Alien at some point, which if Ridley Scott, for God's sake, stop doing that. But, I hope um, he doesn't do that. But uh, also, there's, there's, you know, there's a few, there's a few, there's a few clever little links. I mean, the um, mm. the 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 head up display in the um, in the in the spinners, the, the the purge purge head up display is the same as the head up display in some of the um, vehicles in Aliens. I think that's just just Ridley reusing 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 assets in different films. But um, I think. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. The fact that we're discussing this and getting involved in this and picking it apart shows that there is a, a cool world that's been built there. Definitely. Mm. I mean, the thing with the Atari, the Pan Am, and the Coca Cola is they were all adverts in the original film. So what he's done was he's that they've and, and that's so not, and so not Alger, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. So he's kept them. So it was like, and the reason they used Coca Cola in the original was because it's it's like a brand or something that will never die. Basically, they sort of said. They use that imagery because it's a, uh, you know, it's something they'll never go, and they're right in that. And they're right now, so with Pan Am and Atari have, have kind of gone, you know, Coke's still there, but they were all original products in the first film. So he's kept them, and he says, you know, even 30 years in the future, they're still there as well, which I quite like that as well. And again, it's more linkage to the old world as well, isn't it? Of, 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 of the original as well. There were quite a few nods to the old um, original yeah. film, and I think that was quite mm. nice. Like initially, I thought they're going to want to do it. Um, are they going to overdo it? Is it going to feel forced? And and I actually think they did. They got the balance really good. Yes. You want to avoid the whole nudge, nudge, wink, wink thing, don't you? Really? Yeah, yeah. that's right. And it did. And and I think you know. And obviously, particularly when you're re um, you're surfacing an existing character. And things have moved on. Uh, you know, you could could easily get that wrong. And I think I think it was really nice. Even like things like when they went to um, retrieve the data from uh, on those little spheres. Um, uh, when when uh, K K went to um, 
the Wallace building to do that. Um, yeah. And and it was kind of, but the thing is, they what they did is they mixed like new with old, and so yeah, we we've, we've got some of the old data, and then it was a snippet from from the original and and but it wasn't gratuitous it was oh, okay all right fair enough we've got that there lovely um and and then then the plot moved on which was nice so i, I kind of i really liked those little nods because they were they were there sort of respectfully there if that made sense i mean just kind of finally on patient and unless somebody else got anything to add to it and um, you're saying Alex, about like it could have been a, a pacing that and we'll come to this in a, bit, in a bit later, but there's a lot of detail put into Kay's relationship with his virtual girlfriend, yes. which is Joy. Yeah. I, I guess maybe they could have cut maybe some of that to maybe make oh, it I, I quite, I quite like that relationship. I quite like yeah. that. I mean, they had to, they had to, they had to have her, in, uh, they had to have that relationship build to put more weight on the ending of that relationship, didn't they? Yeah, that's true. I was quite upset yeah. when that happened. I was quite, I was actually quite upset when that happened. Yeah, Considering she's a virtual character, you know. But it could have it could have been fleshed out. I think yeah. for me, it wasn't. And and this is maybe this is because I don't watch enough of Villeneuve's films. But for me, I just felt like there were lots of sweeping shots, and then there were lots of scenes where, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty seconds would go by. And then something would happen. And I know sometimes you're building an atmosphere, you're setting the scene, but 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 set it quicker, you know. And it was kind of, and and then then like there the particular scene I had in mind was the um, scene in the ballroom with the music. Yeah, and, Presley. And I love the music, and I think it was really clever. But that scene dragged, and it really it dragged because. Yeah, it was amazing. You spent all this money getting all of this, this, the, the, or, you know, doing all of the special effects for that, but it didn't really drive the plot forward very much. Basically, what they did is they slugged it out, had a couple of, um, uh, uh, slugged it out a couple of times, and then when should we go and get a drink? Yeah, let's go and get a drink. And, and that, <laughs> well, that's that true. Took, what, that's what you'd about, all do, isn't it? Really? But that took about five minutes and included yeah. like ha half a song. Um, I think I think uh, they're trying to. There's an allegory there between an old relic that they've dig, dug up from musically, which is Elvis, and an old relic which they dug up from the films, which is uh, Deckard's, perhaps. I don't know, yeah, but, uh, and, and that bit was perfect. That that was it. But it was just it was some bits of it were, um, and and the, the original had moments where it was it was slow, and I think that, was, it, the battle that, at the end with 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 yeah, um, Roy exactly. was quite drawn out wasn't it yeah but the the thing is it it, it built the tension and then it moved mm. on and i think i think that was my that would be my bit my complaint is you know set your seed make your point then then get on with it and then we could have maybe had a bit more time with the characters you know in as a consequence you know yeah okay yes there were some characters who i, th who I did feel were underused Mm. Um, and I don't believe that any sequel will, will explore those characters again if, if there's ever another one, which I, I can't see, to be honest. Um, I can't see Hollywood allowing another one after this one unless it really well, does pick up in sales. But I mean, going, going back to, to Joy, um, my one big complaint was, well, why the hell didn't Kay just keep that pen bloody safe in his pocket rather than hold on to it whilst he's punching each other up? Come on, it was so obvious. Come on, keep it... Or, or find a pocket with a zip in. I mean, I said the same thing to my kids. It really bugs me. Should we should we skip forward and talk about yeah, Joy yeah, then? Because then, yeah, I think, should we talk about that? Yeah, and then we'll talk we about the well. Uh, sorry, the the colours and um, yeah. Because yeah. I think I think Joy is it's really well played. Um, yeah, played by um, Cuban actress Anna uh, Diarmas. I hope I said that right. Um, what did we think of her? Go on, John. Well. I, I thought she was very good. I think she uh, she was obviously trying to present as a, a sympathetic character. Um, it was a clever shock intro with the, with the the way she was presented. I, I have certain concerns about her her as a character as well, which I have also with another character later on in the film, um, which will cover another point we're going to talk about. Um, but at the same time, you know, she she exists because of a facet of Kay's personality, and Kay requires a, a companion, 
um, and therefore she she fulfills a function which we shouldn't pick apart too much in terms of the uh, I hate to use the word sex slave because she's not, but you know what I mean. A, a person who's devoted or a creature that's devoted to one character without any choice, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I I didn't quite see it like that. I think I, for me, I just saw it more as a you know, if we're building replicants that need someone, we can sell them someone who can do that. Um, and it was almost, it, it did feel a little bit like that, you know, um, and you can, you can get your own personal companion and then when you can afford it, you can get an upgrade and you can get all these. So it, yeah, it just kind of, I just didn't, I saw it uh, initially. I just saw it as that and thought, Oh, that's right. Have but you seen um, that, 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 the uh, Joachim Phoenix film, her, um, yes, I have seen that. Yes, yeah, I've seen that. It's a great film. Have you seen? Have you seen Alex? No, I missed it. I mean, it made it made me think of a little bit of, of that. Obviously, uh, yeah, I thought of that slightly. John when I was watching the film. Yeah. I thought the same thing. Yeah, it's about it's about falling in love with Siri, isn't it? Basically, and, and um, mm. but yeah. that's 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 weird when you're maybe a human, but when yeah. you're a replicant, I didn't see that as a as no, a, an issue. I mean, issue. K does that. K shouldn't have any desire to to uh, procreate. He shouldn't have any desire, any no. sort of um, lustful desires. But I think his, his relationship with um, Joy was one hundred percent purely romantic, which is quite endearing, really, isn't it? In some respects, quite lonely but endearing. And I particularly like the scene where she walked outside for the first time. I thought that was very moving. Yeah, mm. um, very clever how they they showed the the. Um, the character of Joy start to kind of down, not down, uh, an, analyze and understand Rain, and then portray it accurately on, across her skin. I thought that was very, a very subtle um, bit of storytelling, but really quite nice. Um, nice is a very wishy washy word. Very moving. Mm. Um, yeah. It's a bit like going out to snow for the first time, almost, isn't it, for a child who lives in, lives in Brazil or somewhere like that. Yeah, and it, it was like that, wasn't it? It was very yeah. much like, you know, what do you want to do? Well, I want to go outside because I've never been outside. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, that element was nice. Um, and I think they, there is a moment where he, he, she says something to him and he says, you know, you don't have to say that. As in, you know, you don't have to just follow your programming. Sure. Um, and I think, I think that's that's the kind of initially, we're like, oh yeah, there's there's no there's not any levels to this character. It's um, she's just a companion. That's it. However, um, that 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 felt changed by the end of the film. And oh, almost, it really did, didn't I it? I think. I mean, it, there's so many. Uh, the, the the central theme to this film is understanding what it is to be human. Yeah. Uh, and on many different levels. The fact that Kay was trying to cope with this based on his memories and his supposed background, but also Joy was going beyond, I'm sure someone else has said this, going beyond her programming almost by falling in love with, with, with Kay. Um, yeah, maybe well, either that or maybe nice. that her programming wasn't, um, wasn't as well defined. So it was, you know, your job is to, to be the companion for, for the, uh, for, for your replicant. And yes. then your replicant needs things, um, so you help support them, whatever so those needs are. A you know, procedurally and, generated love affair, almost. Yeah, but I think also that means that as as you come a lot, go further through the plot, and you see that really he needs to know that he's important. Yeah. Um, you know, she 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 can help with that, and 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 um, sort of um, help him feel special. Um, and I think I think that's that's kind of maybe that's. That could just be code, but but because of how it's performed, it, it, you know, by the end of it, you actually kind of feel like, oh, that's you know, that was a real shame. So um, yeah, um, so it was obviously working. You know, we were obviously getting involved in the character. It's just we didn't we didn't see it much depth there. It just you know didn't have time. It, make, it makes it bite bite so much more when he comes across a the, the advertising for for joy. And yeah, talk, that's right. Talks to the big holographic lady, and it's all. It was. It was sad that because you almost felt like, oh, she's not that unique after all, and it's all a bit sort of bit bittersweet, really. Yeah, the timing was right there, wasn't it? Because it was, was quite it, poor timing, wasn't it? Really. Well, no, but it was kind of it was poorly yeah. timed for him. But for him, yeah. For us and for the story, it kind of it yeah. was there back to remind us that actually, don't forget that these are all these are all um, constructs. 
construct yeah that's the right word yeah. so that was quite kind of a, a, a harsh reminder of of what it was i mean i i thought a lot of the um can enjoy stuff as a commentary on commercialism a bit i thought um it was kind of in fact that she's like a virtual girlfriend sort of thing you know it was kind of like you know oh if you don't like this aspect of her then you can change it or you do this and do that and i, I thought it was more of a commentary on the way that we on the way that we act now more than just it, it about being them as a couple as well i thought it was i thought it was quite cutting i thought as well like and so John talks about like the big advert a lot, a lot towards the end, and she using all the same phrases that that he thought were special. When in the end, it was just phrases that he just used all the time. You know, for someone else's joy as well, where it's not special, it is manufactured. You know, it isn't, it, and it isn't real. I, I thought it was more about the themes of that and the way that we use and the way that we use and things and treat people. I thought it was more about that. It's almost turning it back, turning it back on Kay, and actually how unique is he, and how many of his responses are unique, and is he just mm. acting mm. out the program as well? It kind of it puts his his own life in stark relief, which is quite clever. Mm. Yeah. So again, I did think it was a bit a bit drawn out that relationship. I mean, there's the interesting scene. I don't know if I don't know if you want to go into this now. Um, so one, th- I, I think we will. We talk about cinematography in a moment, but I think we talk about it is it's it goes into something else. The film has been accused of being a bit misogynist. Um, I probably wouldn't agree with that, but again, I'm I'm a bloke, so I probably would say that. that. Could you could you explain why they think it's misogynistic? So the way that it it's um, so there's been some complaints about the way that women have been portrayed in the film. So someone like Joy, for example, who's sort of not real. Um, people have pointed out that the that Kay's, in, uh, the Kay's boss, who is played by Robin Wright Penn, um, that there's the scene when they're talking in, in Kay's apartment and she, and she insinuates that she wants to have sex with him, but she can't because he's a replicant and she's human. Um, the Even the underground, like the rebels, we're talking a bit about here as well. The girl that he speaks with uh, is a prostitute as well. And then there's also um, the scene towards the end when he's meeting Deckard. We're not going too much away here. And then some of the, the architecture there, I think, is a pair of lips crossed with a, a shoe or something, isn't there, as well? Some of the architecture. So it's it's been accused of not portraying women in, in a good light. I mean, I, I would actually disagree with that, but it is a criticism of the film that's been written about. Um, I can see Alex's face here. I think he's yeah. got. He's got Alex, go on, jump in. Your, it's uh... complicated because the thing is that when you go to um, to to Deckard's hotel and you have to go through that that um, uh, area that that's not safe. Uh, Isn't he in Vegas? Isn't the hotel in Vegas? Yes, Vegas. Yeah, but yeah. well, this is well, this is so it. That, and that then famously, it shows you... famously um, uh, diverse and uh, non <laughs> yeah. misogynistic yeah, part of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, but but it, uh, kind of for me, it it showed me that that was the downfall of some some of those things because mm. those those symbols were you know derelict and broken and and Redundant you know or... they 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 were probably oversized and and so i think that probably meant they had more impacts than maybe they were trying to make maybe they I, that was that was because of how it shot but um but it kind of but for me i just i i saw those as as icons that you know weren't weren't needed anymore but then on the same side you've got now you've got virtual joy walking around naked so maybe it's just like an older version of of the same thing maybe it's just a reflection of that i have another issue right uh, which doesn't just cover this film but covers another film and that's the issue in hollywood to not celebrate uh women growing old gracefully so my biggest issue wasn't with joy who as you say she served a purpose she's meant to be a virtual girlfriend it's only like looking at a cartoon character who on a screen that, that says nice things to you. Yeah. The fact that they couldn't, that when they brought, and obviously we're in spoiler territory, so we can talk about this. When they brought, there's a scene with Deckard in uh, Wallace's, you know, in the Wallace's corporate building yeah. in the pool room where Wallace is trying to buy off Deckard's loyalty by bringing in a freshly made replicant uh, of uh, Sean Young's character, Rachel, when she was in the first film. And it was, 
a very, very, very good rendition of her. And apparently mm. Sean Young was on set to teach the actress who was uh, mo-capping her how to walk like she did in that, you know, the same scene when she comes mm -hmm. in the smoke in the original film. Yeah. Why, why, why did they have to present Sean, uh, Rachel as a young and pretty thing? Why could we not have seen Sean Young 30 years later in a different plot? Why do we see Carrie Fisher's character, Princess Leia, in um, Rogue One as the young character? It seems like Hollywood quite like showing off the females in their glory as the young pretty things, but the men can still get old and craggy and, and that's allowed. And to me, that's more misogynistic than anything else in this film. I think it's the fact that uh, the characters, the women have to be pretty little dolls and the men can still be old and craggy. I mean, that's the only thing that really annoyed me. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'll just jump in very quickly on that, if you don't mind. The only thing on Rogue One is that that's the time of it. it so Rogue One is is set just before A uh, New Hope. So that's kind of, so time-wise, that's right. That's why that that's in there. So it has to be... Carrie Fisher as she was then. And was to be fair, to... Carrie Fisher is in the new films as, as old Carrie, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But I just go with like on the like on the Rogue One thing. That's why because yeah. of the timeline and that. On Blade Runner with Sean Young, I think it's a very, very good point. Um I mean, they would probably point out that um, you know, like everyone remembers everyone remember her as she was then to what she is now. I think that'll be a bit you know, that's not the greatest sort of reason why as well. I think it's a very good point. I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't have had a Sean Young as she is now. I don't think that would have... Uh, I think it could have... I, think. I think it could have damaged the character, though, because the problem was that um, what that scene talks a lot about, you know, the disposable nature of replicants, yeah. because mm. it's like, oh, we've got the colours wrong. Um, now, obviously, now oh, yeah, um, eyes were her green. Eyes, yeah, her eyes were green is a great line. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Like, her eyes were green. And um, <laughs> that, but the thing was that um, he was talking about that like this is just a copy, um, whereas they were going like bang done. And I think that if that had happened with an older um, character, um, I think it would have been up in arms because I think people would have said, "Oh well, that that's not fair." and you know, I, I think yeah. it's it could have. I mean, it could have meant that he ends up saying, you know, is that you? And that that yeah. maybe that that would have been, you More know, the, 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 he would have actually said, wow. And then then what would happen? I have no idea. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't I don't know, but I do think that the um, putting her in exactly as she was, um, for me felt a bit jarring. Bit problematic, it, it, it really because it, it almost felt like it was an homage to um to her in in the the original version which i guess it was but but it, it but that was the thing it wasn't it, it didn't forward the plot on and i think no. that would have been the shame it would have been better if they'd have caught her at, at an age you know a slightly older um age not completely older but maybe yeah. you know mm. have it you know where she was 30 when she died or whatever that unfortunately would have, that they didn't been relevant they didn't get the face right either. There's still there's no. a still uncanny valley problem there as well. Yeah, it yeah, was. it's very close. If, you get, like, you know, if you're gonna do that, you've yeah. got to get it right. I think. And I just wish they'd have they'd have they'd have found a way of not not CGing it if they mm. could have. You know, a silhouette or smoke around another actress or whatever. You know. Mm. Yeah, or, yeah. Get her to voice it, and you know, yeah. there are lots of tools that they could have used, and just going, oh, we'll CG it, isn't always the right answer and in this case it really wasn't and if i'm right in saying that in the film itself like in the plot i like obviously she dies in childbirth we'll talk about a bit more the plot in a moment as well but the impression that i got was that her and deckard don't have very long on the run they have some time on the run and obviously a child's conceived as well but my impression is she actually dies quite young and not long after the events of the first film would you agree with that or well, you, you get to take into account that uh, there's the whole question in the film of Kay's background. Well, yeah. So it's got to be an event that happened near enough around the time of his inception. Of his creation, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she, so basically they didn't last very long on the run before mm. what, what happened. What happened. I mean, um, just to talk about that, just go back on um, on if it's, if, if it's misogynist or not. I mean... The impression I got that it, it, it wasn't, and I thought a lot of the things like joy and that sort of thing, you know, and the adverts and, you know, and, you know, and, and, and the sex in it, again, I thought it was putting a mirror up to the way we, 
as, as the way we are now with like you know internet dating and like you know virtual girlfriends on the internet and that sort of thing as well i thought it was very i thought what he was going for the was very much putting a mirror against us and saying this is what we're like you know this could be us in the future or you know this is what we're like now we're in the in in, in that we're losing our emotional connections now for something that is on the internet that isn't really real or not obtainable am i going a bit deep there did you get that as well but i thought it was more of contrary on the way things are now more than what they are in the future or am i going way over there over the top that's, that's really deep from you but it's quite deep for me isn't it <laughs> I yeah. think, but i think it's great uh, we're almost entering the realms of is is this film art because yes people get, diff people get different interpretations and they get different things out of art and maybe isn't it great that you get a completely different point of view to other people? That's that's a good thing, I think. Mm. Whether or not, whether or not it's true, who knows? But uh, could you you couldn't get this sort of discussion from Boss Baby? No, um, not quite. No, I think no. Did, the thing is, I think it was probably because because of the the joy, the naked joy, um, talking to Kay. I think that was probably you know if you could have just change that ever so slightly and put some clothes on her i think it would have possibly the impact would have gone a bit but also i think then people would have gone oh okay i kind of get it now i think it was just because you went no that's that's how people are seeing them so that's how i'm going to show them um i mean let's be honest if, if you had a virtual girlfriend like that at some point you'd want to see her with the clothes off and that's i'm being honest here as a, again from a bloke's point of view that's what that's what a, a single bloke living in his own flat with a do what you want avatar you do. I mean, you flip you flip that round. If it was a lady, probably you'd be spending more time over candlelit dinners rather than taking clothes off. Mm. But that's what she'd want to do. Um, it is problematic. It, it, is I don't it think, I don't think there's that much eroticism in the film, really. Is no, there? not really. Uh, it's not really films. about that. Is it? Is it not. because there wasn't balance? So you know, we see Joy, but we don't see any other companions for um, the female. Well, weapons. you see, you see some some uh, slightly translucent outlines in the, the replicant sex shops or the streets, don't you? Against the glass. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, so and obviously, to. yeah. I mean, I, mean, I would. Go sorry, John again 40 50 years in the future social mores will start to be a bit more permissive you know nudity might not be such a shocking thing in the future to some people you, you look around you now uh, people wear less than they used to in sort of victorian era it could just be a you know an assumption that that's not such a problem you know yeah that's true but again if that was the case we'd see naked men walking around as well wouldn't we and we don't so mm. you know i mean like, and also as well like you know apart from from it, there are uh, uh, women characters here who aren't just set dressing as well. You do have Cage Boss with Robin Wright Penn, someone in authority. Wallace's assistant is, is a woman love, as well. Love, yeah. love who's the main bad they're, they're strong yeah. characters as well, aren't yeah. they? She's really not. good. Yeah. And then you and, and and the leader of the Replican Resistance yeah. is, is, is revealed to be female as well. So there are female characters there that aren't just pretty things or set dressing as well. So I think it's important to realise that as well. No, I agree. I, 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 I think actually the casting was you know, a lot more balanced um, than perhaps some of the, 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 the sort of um, surface was. So mm. I think that was, that was probably mm. it. You know, they probably if someone just looked at a couple of the, um, uh, stills and stuff that was available where they would have, well I don't I don't approve of that but I think if they watched it they would they would see that that's not that's not really the point but it is it's one of the things that they we're thinking about but it's not the it's not the actually point of the film. If, you, if you really dig deep and think about it apart from perhaps Rachel does it matter whether uh, Kay and love are male or female they're, they're not they don't they're not they're sexist because they're machines aren't they yeah that's mm. right so, we'll speak about that just the last very last point on this yeah. what did you guys think of the scene when he and joy sort of have sex by way of him using the the uh the prostitute uh, yeah the prostitute who's also part of the resistance as well i thought that's a very strange scene that was so basically what they do just for the viewer um who's listening so basically joy basically his ai gets kind of fused in with the body of the prostitute so he see Joy's face as a body, doesn't he, as well? And then they have sex. It's quite, it's quite a clever scene. It's quite it's, clever. It's, the way it's done is brilliant because he he does this. Sorry, Alex, very very quickly. He mm. does this great scene 
with the camera where you can see both actresses' face in the one shot as well. So you've got Mac- can- Mackenzie Davis, haven't you? Um, yeah. Yes. Who, who, interestingly, her name is Mariette, which I think is quite appropriate if you think about it because it's not far from the word marionette or puppet, which is kind of what she was in this scene, wasn't she? Mm. Um, and uh, I thought it was very clever how you kind of had that time delay between the faces which showed yeah. the two people there i mean if it had been really cheesy it had gone the way of ghost you know when um um debbie moore dances with a girl work who's actually patrick swayze as a ghost yes yeah that's, that's the first thing i thought of when i saw the scene was that scene from ghost <laughs> um but obviously that in that one you, you never see this sort of the jitteriness between the two the two physiques i just mm. was I th- very clever alex do you think you're ahead of that yeah well for me it was quite creepy I kind of, um, uh, I don't know what it was, but it just didn't, it really, it confused me. Um, I think it was just, it it was just, it was really well done, but I think it was just. Well, um, she's a lump of meat, isn't she, basically, which is the problem. Yeah, and I think Mm. that was the, that was what I felt really uncomfortable with. What what they're trying to do is they're trying to, um, so the role um, of the prostitutes, obviously to follow on from um, uh, Pris from the original yeah. And, and so well, I yeah, if, I got the if you, yeah. If you think about it, and so they did like they kind of styled her quite similarly with the striking hair and stuff, mm. um, and and so it kind of, it kind of the, yeah, I get what they were trying to do, but I think that particular scene felt um, just a, a little strange. But maybe that was the point. Maybe it was meant to make you think about it and think about whether that's a bit uncomfortable. Almost. Yeah, maybe. Again, I. Th- I, I I think it reinforces what I said before about again. I thought it was a commentary on the way we are now with uh, with the way of our attitudes towards sex in the internet and sort of like things like porn on the internet as well. Again, I thought it was again as a commentary on that. You know where you can like you know make it whatever you want and sort of thing as well. I thought again it was it was all a metaphor for the, the present day and the way we are at the moment. I thought, but mm. I'm going very deep. Okay, <laughs> so we've got a lot on themes and we've talked a lot about. Uh, the way the film is in this painting, we should talk probably a little bit more about the technical aspects to it now. We, so we just did about the visual effect there on on with the two faces as well. Um, the the visuals, there's the cinematography, the colours. Uh, John, talk to me about this. It was I, I mean, obviously, cinematography was. Um, you know, Roger Deakins. I think he should get an Oscar for this. I think it's. Mm one of the most visually arresting films I've seen for a long time. Uh, whether or not that went on for too long um, remains to be seen. But I know, and let's be honest, uh, with reference to pace, when I rewatch Blade Runner, there are times when I've come back after a few beers, I have fallen asleep, asleep in front of my, one of my favourite films. Mm-hmm. That's because that it is a slow film. What this film allows you to do is almost to create uh, thematic landscapes that match how the story is going on. So you've got the the darkness of the city as we see. It's much less Hades-like than the original film. It's it's almost like an egg that's being cracked with light coming out between the cracks where the city's very dark, and then you get the... the you can see the scale of it. It's humongous. Um, and then you have the junkyard scenes, which are much more sort of the grey and the reds. And then you have this sort of Ozymandias-style, sort of Las Vegas bleak scape that's sort of yellow and orange. And I think... The the clashing colours and the, and the soundtrack that goes along with these scenes gives you such a, a massive sense of scale that you don't see in other films and depth, mm. and it, it, almost like the, the 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 film has no edges to it when you watch it, which I thought was very arresting. And um, I think I think there'll be people for, you know later on down the line when they watch them on Blu-ray and 4K will pick apart some of these scenes and, and look at the. The detail and more more closely when you can you know, freeze frame it and so on. But I think I think it really really uh, was very appropriate for the subject matter and worked really well. Whether or not there'll be a, a master cut of this film later on where they've edited out some of the scenes to make it a pacier film, who knows? Someone will do it on the internet probably. Nevertheless, I will be pausing and looking at some of these scenes when I get the uh, the film myself later on because it just, it's beautiful. It reminds me of the, of the beauty of Mad Max Fury Road. Mm. Yeah, it's which, depressed, actually. Which I rewatched in black and white in, the, in the, the, the version that the director wanted you to watch it in, and I thought that was amazing. It's almost like looking at a 
moving photography in some cases, which is a, way, a strange way of saying it because that is film, isn't it? But seeing frames of uh, pieces of art being presented in front of you really, really, um, it really struck me a lot. Very resting. How about you, Alex? Um, yeah, I mean, I loved, I loved how it shot, but I also, I was a little overwhelmed by some of it. I think that the choice of, of colours um, really, you know, they do set out the individual places, yeah. um, but but they're so harsh that, it, you know, sometimes it's it's quite, you know, that yellow, that gold that they go mm. with is so bright. Um, it, it kind of, it, it, it really overpowers everything. Um, and obviously that was the intention for that yeah. to be seen, but, but but it kind of it it, lo it lost a little bit of realism that way. Um, Do you think he's trying to push like a like a Triton version of film noir almost in that respect? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking because it's kind of it, it's like you know this is this scene is yellow, this scene is black, um, um, this scene is this, you know, and it was kind of they clearly for each of them they they chosen specific colours and 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 it it, it really worked. Um, but I kind of, I kind of felt a little bit like um, that works. But you just need to make sure that you've got the plot and and everything else. And I think maybe it was so focused on the um, uh, the scenery that you know that's where the I was thinking was this is lovely, but but where's the plot? You know, do you and, think perhaps there's been so much um, forewarning, foreboding about the whole often copied neon? Yeah. Like landscapes from films mm. like um, um, oh, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson's film. Oh, uh, Ghost of Shell. Ghost of Shell and things like that. Well, so many films are neon and glistening puddles neon that they almost mm. made an effort to avoid that mm. by going the other way and becoming almost land pa painting style, landscapey paintings. Yeah, it, they, I mean, and they did. And I think you're probably right. Um, I kind of wanted some more realism in some cases. And I think the yellow mm. was the one that was too much for me. I think the only other thing I'd say about it is, you know, it, it's obviously striking. I want to see a, um, a lot more about, I love the cityscape by the way, because mm. it was, it was gray at on the top. And then as, as you approached, you realize that actually all of the light and all of the, brightness of, uh, is actually all between between it's the almost like on, onion peel layers and that's it, it. societal layers mm. onion peel and you, you can dig down and find the color underneath but yeah that was brilliant i really like yeah. that, that idea um I, so so that you know there were wonderful ideas i just think mm. um maybe the yellow was too much um i do worry <laughs> that that some of these scenes are going to be very difficult to see on a tv like on a normal TV in a house with a lit room, you know, and the dog on the sofa or something. I yeah. think that, you know, there's because some of the scenes are so dark and the contrast is so limited, um, you're going to be looking at a black on black. Scene. Do you think by the time this film comes out, which I presume will be 2018, it comes out on, on general release. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. There'll be enough people with with large 4K TVs who can watch this and appreciate. I don't it. think there'll be enough, and that's my worry because the thing is, I've got a pretty good 1080p TV. Mm. Um, I'm very happy with it. Its blacks are fairly black, but this requires, you know, a, a really black screen because uh, because it's some of the scenes. Um, I think the one that that comes to mind, which is 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 gorgeous, is the one inside the Wallace Building with the water. Yeah. Um, no, it's Yeah. And and it's 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 lovely, and I but I I want to see it more. I want I can't quite see it because someone put the lights off, and um so that 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 you know hugely immersive when you're sitting in the the cinema in 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 the dark with the shimmering mm. and stuff um but i do i do think some of that is going to be really lost when it goes to dvd so i'm i'm a bit worried about that time will tell well if, if it's an excuse sony to buy new tv as that's the perfect excuse isn't it so the thing is what you need is you need a tv the size of your wall and it needs to be an oled mm. tv that can do proper blacks um and 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 so that would be and it needs to be about 8k instead of 4k and then, at which point then I'll, i could probably be 
be good. Well, when when uh, they finally re-release the, uh, the this version of Blade Runner twenty forty nine with with um, high, high you know ultra eight K super pace edition just for you, Alex, <laughs> you can appreciate it on your on your um, house sized eight K eight eight K TV. If they could do it within ninety minutes. Um, <laughs> Uh, that would be awesome. Maybe with a comfort break in the middle, that would be lovely. Um, but no, I to I did enjoy it, and I, and I think yeah. they, they are very. It is very striking, but yeah. um, but I do worry about some TVs. What about you, uh, Mark? How do you feel about the, 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 the cinematography? I mean, you two have, have covered it really well. To be honest, there's not much more I can. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful, and yes, he should get an Oscar for it as well. I thought the work he did also on. Uh, uh, in the Bond film we did, Skyfall was fantastic as well. And um, I mean, the only thing I can really add is that the two most striking scenes that I love the most, I love the red and yellows in Vegas. So when he gets out of the car and he's walking to, um, to the casino, the colours there are just absolutely fantastic. And there's a scene, um, Alex talks about the ripples in the water. I think it's the, I think it's the scene where love is destroying the evidence, I think it is, and where she goes into the Wallace building and then basically the ripples in the water are reflected on the walls. I yeah. don't know if you guys can... can yeah, you guys... they are on the walls, that's right. Yeah, I, I mean, that looked absolutely, like, that looked absolutely fantastic as well. So those were the two most striking ones that I can, that I can recall. And, and then you get, like, all like, like the Manhattan, don't you, the, the skylines and that, which you game room, which is a home to the first film, it does all that again, which is Can fantastic. Can I just ask, oh, on. why would a blind man make his office space the centre of a lake with steps spread apart across the water like stepping stones? I mean, of, of all, in terms of accessibility for the disabled. In a dark room as well. In a dark room, well, obviously it doesn't matter if it's dark, but the fact that he's, True. Why, would, why would you do that? Why would you make it? You can't appreciate the... The, the reflections also you're gonna fall in aren't you it's because it's 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 because it's cool that's why John. yeah 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 i mean <laughs> but is it, actually if i'm gonna Sorry. go no, no that's fine um <laughs> although he's blind he's got that like a piece of technology when is it they press a like a blue button it connects well he's, he's got he's got like well. drones that fly around him and let him see i think don't they all yeah right. so i think he's he's got some kind of peripheral vision isn't he i think as well he isn't sort of blind as in he's completely like he's blind but those are down to see don't I, they, I think i did like the little, the little nods to sort of personality and, co and commercialism where he had a little sort of um cigar case with different things and he could click against his skin it kind of mm. reminded me of the selection of weird and wonderful uh vaping devices you can get <laughs> <laughs> these e-cigarettes e oh let's choose the let's choose the steel one let's choose the enamel one let's choose the the wood teak version one <laughs> uh, obviously they all serve different functions but it struck me as like what color drone remote device would Sir like attached to his neck today? You know, it felt like that almost like a little bit. Was that necessary? I don't know. It's very strange. It's just, it's just another part to it though, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's just, you know, an aspect to that world, which I thought really worked. I would have liked to have seen a bit more of Wallace. Um, yeah. Mm. I, I kind of feel like, you know, his, his role was very enigmatic and, 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 um, I just kind of felt like it, we could have fleshed it out a bit more. I, I think he he may have been quite a challenge to work with on set, from what I hear. He 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 remained blind throughout the whole filming. Yes, yeah. So like he actually couldn't the actor the actor couldn't see, which must have been quite a challenge to to work with. Um, but um, yes, I must be the only one who likes Jared Harris. Um, because, uh, sorry, Jerry, not Jerry Harris. Jerry yeah. Harris is um, at Georgia Because I'm just going very on a tangent on him very quickly. See, I loved his interpretation of the Joker in Suicide Squad. I thought it was saying different and saying uh, really that we have. Uh, see, uh, I don't want to go into it too much, but. Uh, I just, sorry, I just threw up a little bit there. Sorry. <laughs> well, sorry about the, that. The I think you've reason, broken it now. Yeah, I've broken John. The only <laughs> way the, the only way I say. The only reason, well, no, it's not. It's not the film. I'm talking about the way he portrays oh, yeah. the Joker in it. The only I just want to talk about it very quickly because he actually he's actually got a bit of grief on this. People said he's not very good in, in this film. I disagree. But well, sorry, I, in 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 the Suicide Squad or in or in um, yeah, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. 
yeah, but I think he's perfectly fine in Blade Runner, but he got a bit of grief. I still think he's getting a bit of anti-Joker thing in, at, at the moment in other things that he's in. But I actually liked him as a Joker in it because I thought he was a completely new Joker that we hadn't seen before. You know, he's like a gangster one, you know, because he can't redo what Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson did so very quickly. I thought he made it his own, his, his own interpretation. And again, I think he's good here. He's... As I guess he's in the matic, but he's also there's also like a kind of like a a calm killer thing to him as well. There's that scene. I didn't isn't dislike it, where, him. Mark. I didn't no, dislike him in no. this film Mark. because I like the scene. Is it um, it, uh, where the latest model comes out, doesn't she? Yeah. From the packaging, and he kills her basically all like straight away because she's not what he wants. And we why does he about, kill her? Is, is so he we, testing her to see if she can be pregnant? Yeah. So I think we should go into plot now because i think we talk technical when we're talking themes and stuff so we'll do plot so i guess the main plot of this uh, we talked about rachel didn't we and the fact that she, that she's that she's dead so what we think is the tyrell corporation in her model was somehow able to make replicants replicate that's not as, that was quite think- that was more difficult to say than i thought it would be but there we go yeah so um, so basically, uh, uh, Deckard and Rachel have a child, and then ch- and then the child is born. Then Rachel dies in childbirth. Um, what did you guys kind of think of that as as the main plot and and that plot? It it seemed to me quite a sort of predictable way to go. What did you think, Alex? I think it's um, <laughs> I think it's one of those things where the fundamental question that you have at the end of Blade Runner. Uh, the original one is whether he uh, Deckard is a replicant or not, and um, so I I really liked that this time they didn't quite they kind of answered it but they didn't quite, and and so it's not it's not clear if Deckard is a replicant or not, but they they come they take us a lot closer to him being a replicant than that ever happened in the first one. So I think it's kind of it's assumed that he's a replicant by the end of it, isn't it? What model would he be if he was? Well, the the assumption is that him and Rachel were Nexus Sevens, um, that really nice tablet that Google used. Yeah, to um, <laughs> they they, they, just, they won't remake it, so uh, they they had to get people to get anyway. Uh, going off for the tangent, um, but but yeah, so they 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 are Nexus Sevens, and um, Wallace alludes to this when he says that you, you know maybe you were um, you were meant to fall in love, you know maybe mm. you were presented with designed, someone who designed, to fall, designed to fall in love, and maybe this was this was how how your purpose. Um, but then it doesn't really touch it at all again after that point, and it's kind of a bit of a, a shame. And then we have this this um uh the theme about um you know breeding replicants and i think it doesn't touch that game which is a bit of a a bit of a shame really um well it's it's problematic because if you go into too much detail and try and go into the science of it you 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 make your own mcguffin don't you really yeah um i mean i i i i I don't think we got any closer to answering the question in any way i think it's entirely possible that a human a replicant could do this mm. um, um and it would be in the favor of the design of the replicant to do this to to have more options open to them uh the fact that Deckard's still alive and, and has it aged can replicants age i right. find that problematic as well yeah, unless, no, unless the next John, seven was just... trying to age you know, you know i don't know John, can I just dive in very sorry touching you i do apologize no no um in the opening scroll when they talk about that the collapse of Toriel and and what is comes to into it, it does say that they that he started creating replicants with no shelf life. So obviously, in that's the first different time, to, to showing signs of aging, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but the application being that obviously, like the reason why uh, Dr. Howard's Beatty uh, Abati dies in the first one is because he's his time's up, isn't it? You know, yeah, he's designed to sort of stop at a certain point where basically what Wallace has done is that he's created replicants with no end point at the moment. So that you could say that's, that's how he's aged and that's why Deckard's still around. But, uh, but if, 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 uh, <laughs> if replicants got no end point, why would they age? Cause if they age, well, yeah, surely they're yeah. going to have an end point. 
I mean, my own personal. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm winding you up here, but I, I think, no, no, I, think no, that's fine. I, I, I find it. I find it. Either these things are designed to be useful, have a useful non-shelf life purpose to them, and they keep going, or they're designed to die and crumble. And if they're designed to die and crumble, then and they age, then what's the point of making them like that? Do you see? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, going back to what um, Alex said about the, the the plot the plot device where. Wallace says they were designed to get together and have a baby. I really enjoyed that. I, I, and I, I'm, I'm with you. In the, I don't think it was developed enough because that's a really interesting idea. The fact that you can actually make this sequel 30 years later, and I mean actually make the film 30 years later and still have such a well intertwined plot and almost like the original film was written with this in mind, I thought was really yeah. clever. Mm. And it's a shame we didn't go further and maybe maybe the filmmakers and producers just want us to be speculating and talking about it for years and years to keep the mythos going and keep the film popular like the original did. I think if too many questions were answered, we go, oh, that was good, and then move on. Do you see? Mm. So yeah, who knows? I agree. It knows, is, it, it's fun. It is, I, the, other, the other thing is maybe, and I'm going to, this is a spanner in the works, but maybe there's no such thing as replicants anymore. And maybe that this is the way that humans are created. There we go. I've, 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 just, well, go. I've broken Sorry. you both now. <laughs> Sorry, what, you mean they're, they're all being cloned, they're being grown, lab grown, but they're all human. Yeah, maybe everyone's sterile and this is how this is how it, it works now. I mean, there is, there is a theory to say that they're all replicants, everyone's a replicant. Yeah. Um, and there's some, there's definitely theories out there saying that Neander Wallace is a replicant. Um, and this is his, his way of taking over the world by producing pure replicants like himself. Mm. Um, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting mm. theory that I quite I, like. I think the idea, like uh, the whole Descartes thing, I, personally, I, I prefer the idea that he's human because I, I just, I think it's more interesting if he is human. I think like in the first film, it, again, it's, you know, it's, it's about human versus machine and, and I find that a bit more interesting than you know the idea that he could be a replicant is a nice little sparrow in the works thing as well but it I don't think it's a question you're ever ever going to get an answer to because it's generally it's just more fun and enigmatic for it never to be answered because people will say yes he is people will say they aren't and it will just live the way it is it, will, it, it it's more interesting if they keep it open the way they are I think more interesting than that though I mean the main the whole crux of this film, the main question we should ask is, is the dog real? That's a good point. And what happens to the dog as well? Because uh, do you see any other animals in the movie? No, you don't, do you? No. No, I don't think you do. It's a good point. And we're, yeah. what, 30 years down since the last movie? Where's that yeah. dog come from? And if that dog's not real, does that mean that Deckard isn't real? Or is he real? <sighs> Jesus Christ, my head's spinning oh, now. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, God, you could be here for a long time. You could be a long time. And I was going to say something, and then I've totally forgot my... Have I completely derailed the train of thought there? Sorry. You yeah. have. It's, it's, it's okay, John. It's not hard. It's all right. I've, I was going to say something then. I, no, go on. You two have been along. I'm, not, I've got, I'm gone. Right. Sorry. I can see the rabbit hole just behind you there. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very blank expression at the moment, everyone. Uh, can see I mean, it, but I, yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, if, if we're just shooting the breeze here, I, I did like the, cool. the recurring theme of the eyeball. You, you see the eyes close up in this film quite a lot. Yeah. Right, right on the, and obviously the Voight comp, the comp test from the original film focused on the eyes, and then you have the the the, 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 um, the serial numbers are glowing in the eyes of this of, of replicants in this film. I just thought that yes. theme of the eye, and then if you when you flew when they flew over the um, the circular shaped um, solar cells, the way. It, it's a transition from the eye to the solar cell. There's definitely a, the eye yeah, is a he, theme in this. Com it is completely. A theme. Yeah, it absolutely is a theme, just like it was in the original. And yeah, and I think that that is quite nice. Um, I think I think. Yeah, my question is is probably a bit broader, which is, do we think this is a worthy sequel? I think it is. Oh, absolutely. I, I've just got a train of thought back. Sorry. I, I've just oh, remembered right. what I was going to say. Sorry, before we go into that. I was just going to talk about Kay, sorry, and right. uh, about him being a replicant. Sorry. So there's a, a thread in the film about is he is he real or not? You know, or like on, like in the memories about him as well. Yes, that's right. Is he a and, special, special one? Yes. 
Is he Deckard's so, son? Is what you're saying? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So my interpretation is is that he was the dummy, like he was the red herring, wasn't he? Because in the plot, is they're trying to find, aren't they? Basically. Well, they so made Deckard, that quite clear. They make it very yeah. clear that he's he, that he isn't he isn't uh, a child of the of, of the Deckards. Yeah, yeah but so he's a decoy when everyone thinks he's a special one, isn't he? Because they say that, that the girl they're trying to protect, but they put him with the other kids. So there's a girl and a boy, isn't there? He realizes that there's a girl and a boy, but the boy was was basically a replicant. He was a red herring to throw everyone off the scent of of the girl being like real. Yeah, that's right. Well, you're thinking yeah. of Anna, Anna, aren't you? Yes. Anna, right. Yeah. Yes. It, it was Deckard's daughter in the end as well. Yeah. That's I mean, what was the main point of Julia, sorry, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they did a very, very good job of introducing a character and teasing who she was. Um, and um, uh, if we could talk about our, our favourite scenes in the film, I, I, th I definitely think the closing scenes with um, Deckard being reunited with his daughter was was really good. Mm -hmm. Kind, and I, I, I really uh, going on to our next on one of our points on, on the agenda. I know you want to talk about sequels to a sequel. I I don't want to see a sequel to this film. I don't want to see any more. I think I think that closure. Of Harrison and uh, Harrison Ford, of Deckard and Anna reunited was enough for me, and with obviously with with uh, Kay dying at the end as well for me that was enough. And I know I know the this, the story of the rebellion was very underdeveloped. I don't care. I, I I'm happy with this as a, as a conclusion really. Oh, see, I'm totally different. I, I don't I, know how you feel about that. I, I would love to see another film. Yeah, so. <laughs> Beef for the reasons you just said, like rebel I'd like to see like a rebellion film that you know, I'd love to see that. And then you're always told you about like the outworlds that that they've colonised several worlds, haven't they, outside of our own planet? But we've never seen that. There's always talked about, isn't it? So in the original, that like, the story is that is that the replicants are basically have killed their way back into Earth, haven't they? As well, we've never seen so the outworlds. If there was another sequel, what would you like to see as a sequel? Then? Go on, be, be, you, you mentioned the outwards. Go, g give me, give me a synopsis of your sequel. What would you like to see? Well, I think it would be the, the rebellion. It would be, you know, it would be, a, you know, like sort of humans versus the replicants. Although that's not quite like in, in style. Like it couldn't be a detective story like this is, unlike the first was. You'd have to broaden it. I think you'd have to make it more of a world event than just the, you know. Yeah, uh, a war, a war would would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, that, would, it would be a different film. It would. I don't be, think. I yeah. don't think it would. I don't think it would sit well with the style of the current movies. I think there'll be a lot no. of upset fans. Yeah. Whether whether that's fair or not, I mean, you, you, maybe you want to hit that demographic of the more action-based fans, perhaps possibly. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of upset that... people, but it might no, make I... more money. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think, for example, the war could be in the background, and then it, you know. Uh, because it's now found that the deck has a daughter we don't know if she's human or if she's half human half replicant or what she is as well so and and this film basically like, like what it says that she is the key to making more replicants pregnant isn't she basically is that's why that's why he's after the child all the time you know that's why he's after her because he can't replicate what tyrell did to give her reproductive or Rachel reproductive organs. That's why he's after the DNA of the, of the child. So I think that could be further developed on. Then, if she was found, then you know, like like her, like her makeup could be an influence on on the war, which could be in the background. It doesn't have to be an extra film, but something along that lines. Just another instalment. I would like. Or I might I just what about what about you, Alex? I think. Um... I think I think I don't need to see another one of this plot. Um, I do want to see more of the world that's created, and I think that's part of the thing. The things you're asking for, like you know, uh, really are some of the the depth that that's missing. So, like you know, that plot line around the the um, uh, around the replicants mating and 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 becoming a. a you know, a people really. Um, mm. That's that's kind of stuff that they could felt like it could have been. You know, uh, it could have been developed a bit more. Um, 
and and going off world obviously there was an intention not to go off world this time mm. um uh, you know but it's a, it's a bit of a shame because because not going off world at all meant that you didn't get the answer of what's it like you know and and, mm. and how's how's that work um so i would like to see it, it's one of the things where i i, I kind of i almost want to see another film but i want it to be completely separate from this plot line and i don't know how you could do that without here, here are two options how you could do it alex right i would like to see uh I hate to use the word prequel, but I'd like to see a film bridging the gap between 2019 and 2049, maybe mm -hmm. a live action version of the whole plot with the EMP pulse. Okay, and, that's interesting. And, and that leaves you with somehow introducing Wallace and Tyrell mm -hmm. going off to his Chris, Chris Fouch or whatever. Or you could, what would be a really cool film, and you might want to bring James Caron back on for this role in Ridley Scott, is a film showing some of the... Um, missions and life and tribula tribulations of batty pris and co on in space ah, following okay. following their life before they re and then maybe concluding the film with them realizing we've got this time is up let's make our way to earth and closing shot landing on earth or something like that yeah. i think that'd be really interesting because you see the outworlds and you'd see you'd see the world and it'd be great to recreate you know the original blade runner world as well um and I think, or, or even make it as a series, you know, a TV series, which would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure someone somewhere is having this conversation right now because mm. ka-ching, ka-ching, you know. Netflix, sign up, please. Yeah, that's, um, a, yeah. that's a Netflix one. That, Considering that's Netflix one. actually paid the same budget for Star Trek Discovery for each episode to, to actually license their episodes on air. Did they? They paid something like $7 million an episode an in episode. total to have them that that that's a global you know the non, wow. non cbs it, wow. you know there's money the netflix has money there and I, I wouldn't put it past them to to approach um is it sony that produced um blade runner is it sony pictures yeah, sony it, isn't did it? It. i you know i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past them to, to approach sony and say well could we you know do do a netflix series around the blade runner universe i wouldn't be surprised yeah, Amazon. I would, I would I mean, like Amazon to see Prime that. might get there first, obviously, because they got the man in the high castle and they, they're big fans of Philip K. Dick. And Amazon mm -hmm. produced the Electric Dream series that's been on Channel 4 that I've been watching. It's very good. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Is it good? I haven't seen that. Is it good? They're, again, they're slower paced, the more human based stories. We are mm -hmm. going off another tangent here. But I just think, you know, in, term, in terms of what else, I, I think I'm with Alex. I think following on that storyline. It, in, in, in its own essence is probably in redundant but you could have a have a film or a, or a sideline film with hints of that plot or re repercussions from that plot yeah. it would work really well and wouldn't insult the intelligence the audience and wouldn't cash in on the violence and the action because i think that in this film I took it going back to the pace once more time that the, the fact it's a long drawn out slow paced film really emphasizes the violence when it happens and yes. puts it in such uh, stark relief and, and it really is quite effective and quite shocking in some respects because you just don't expect it to happen i think to have a, ser a film that's all you know terminator-esque blockbuster-esque would, would, would really uh, do the the intellectual property a disservice i think yeah i know i agree i think that's a good uh, that's a good idea um yeah what else have we the only other thing i want to touch on really mm. briefly because uh, we're kind of running over now but, yeah we're short on, yeah, um wrap up but what 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 did you think of the audio <laughs> see now i have an apple music account and i as i got into my car leaving the cinema i uh, added the soundtrack to my my music library now i have an i have an electric car and i went to see this quite late so i drove home through my town uh with in my electric car with the soundtrack on at full volume with all the lights and the streets on <laughs> it was quite it was quite a cool experience i i really 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 like the soundtrack a lot I, I have to say i do confess i do fast forward past the elvis presley tracks when i listen to it yeah. and i don't listen to that awful poppy final track on the soundtrack which i don't know why is on there um there's like a sort of a female vocalist singing right at the end um, I think it's because I think it was the the credits music. You had kind of a poppier right. song at the end. Oh, I didn't um, I, but I think obviously it was it was uh, Hans Zimmer, wasn't it? Along with uh, I'm just trying yes. to think of the, the, the other musician now who was along with him. Um, 
uh i can't i can't put, put, put my words to it now but um benjamin uh benjamin wellfish wellfish obviously i thought there's a very very good job of uh referencing um vangelis's soundtrack mm -hmm. and uh, obviously the the, the 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 touches and the hints on it were really good uh i, I felt in the cinema it complemented the machinery you know there's some scenes with spinners going past and you get this sort of clash of industrial noise i thought it worked really well and it was a really good homage to the original soundtrack and i think obviously vangelis didn't do this i don't know either he didn't want to no. or wasn't available um i think they, it's a really in terms of fan service for the original soundtrack it's really good um and i've listened to it i listen to it a lot at home in headphones how about you guys i was just wonder if you've bought Kay's jacket yet as well, John, because I can just see you in the car <laughs> with the jacket on as well. Desperately trying to get it to lift off the ground and fly, yeah. Yeah. Well, that jacket has been advertised on Facebook as well. It's, I mean, you can buy the jacket as well. I, 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 yeah, I will, I will not be buying no, the jacket. I, no, I would like to, but I don't think I'm going to look quite as good as, quite, as Ryan Gosling does in it as well. So, no, yeah. I've resisted so far. Attempted, but not bought it, no. Um, uh, if, I was, if I was a replicant, my line would be, Discontinue straight away, mate. To be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always talk about centrics and scores when we do these. Um, I'm the resident score person. Again, I loved it as well. Um, as you say, it's, it is a wonderful homage to the original. It just crackles and it does. I love the electric in it as well. It's like a current in it as well, isn't it? Where you're like, it spikes and then goes down and then yeah. penetrates you as well. So, yeah, no, I loved it as well. I bought it straight away as well. I, like as soon as I saw the film I was on the train, I was just like, "Bye!" and I bought it straight away. So like, I yeah. don't, th I don't think it's a, it's a soundtrack you can um, listen to in all occasions. I think it's it's very no, much no. a very personal experience when you listen to it. It's not something you can put on speakers in the house and the whole family can enjoy no. by any stretch. I'm looking forward to the time when I'm a bit drunk, which will probably be Friday, uh, when I get the last train, get off the train, and I'll probably listen to that in the dark walking home. Just don't I'm get quite, mugged, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite enjoying that. I think I'll feel invincible when I'm doing that as well. So, but yes, I agree. It's a fantastic score. Yeah, I loved it. Alex, Alex you? you? Um, I really love the score, but there's the part where they they I can't remember what's happening, but they just put that really really loud tone on, and it just becomes really um really overwhelming, and I've, I've we see it in like horrors and stuff. But, um, oh, is it, is it the the um, inception sort of? Yeah, sort that's of, it. Yeah. And it's, like, it's a complete four corner and tag. And and um, I I know they just need to turn the the sound down. Maybe I'm getting old. If but, Alex, you, sure, if, yeah. Alex, yeah. if you listen very very carefully, uh, another soundtrack I'm, I'm a big fan of is actually uh, Zimmer's soundtrack to Arrival. Oh right, yes. And now, if you listen to Arrival, what they've got. What they've done in there is there's lots of sort of choral voices and sort of a mm -hmm. bit like the um, the scene from 2001 when he's going into the obelisk, the sort of woo yeah. and the choral rising and you, using the shepherd effect, you know that continual yeah. scale that they use in Dunkirk. Right. I think I think you can he, I can just pick out some of the elements that he's used in Arrival for essentially a sound that sounds like the cry of the aliens, the cry of the um, the heptapods, the very loud large. Right, yeah. You can hear that same sound in Blade Runner, almost like he's reused an audio asset. Okay, and I think that's kind of his way of projecting in a, an almost unworldly alien sound. Okay, but as you say, it's, uh, you're right. I think it is a little bit overused in the soundtrack. You hear you hear this claxon quite a lot. I mean, he's and great. it's the quieter sounds that are better. The, the quieter elements are better. I think. Yeah, I mean, I like I, do, I like the soundtrack, but but it just kind of it did overwhelm me a bit. But um, but it's still worth still worth what uh, listening to. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. All right, um, have we got anything else? Are we cut. Are we done? I think we're good. Any, any, anybody for anything else? Any, any I'm just nitpicks? asking you now, guys. Yeah, one little nitpick. I mean, in, in terms of pace of this podcast, what do you think? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do, do okay, we, we, have we, have we, we take it too long? <laughs> I think it's. Been good. I think when you deal with a film like this, of two hours forty, you've got to have a good chat about that, haven't you? As well, <laughs> Paul will be hating this now. Paul would be like we should have finished about an hour ago. So yeah. But um, he's, he's probably right. But he's, but he's not <laughs> here, so we've just done it ourselves. That's fine. I mean, the only other thing, I mean, I, look, I loved it, and it's definitely like my favourite film that's come out this year, I think. The only thing I'd say, the last fight seems a bit anticlimactic. I don't think it's really even that needed to fight un under the water with the car. Can replicants drown? I mean, well, apparently they can. 
according right. to this. I was, I, I, again, that's another thing because, again, yeah, because obviously, like, love does drown. And then, again, what I automatically assume that Deckard is, is human is because he's really scared about the water rising up because he's about to well, drown. Maybe, or maybe Nexus 7 just rusted water. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's rusted, I don't know. Yeah. It's not that whiskey, whiskey puts away, you know what I mean? You should be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Any, anybody for anything else or, sh- or will we be done? Uh, do you have any housekeeping you have to do um, in terms of uh, how people can find the uh, uh, other, other podcasts? Anything like that? Yeah, well, if, if you like what we're doing, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. So we are at Backwards uh, Compatible is the yeah. uh, hashtag it, as isn't well. It, isn't it? I think it's at backwards com, isn't it, on Twitter? It's about it's at, at backwards com. Yeah. Just you type backwards me. compatible in and you'll find us. So You can yeah. tell me I've not rehearsed this part as well because John's <laughs> just throwing me there as well. I've thrown you in it, yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John, for that. Cheers. Does anybody want to put their own personal hat? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to tell you my, my, my address, my home address, my phone number, my national insurance number, yeah, and the okay. length of my um, wrist. Can I have I, your I... password as well, please? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. I have I'm, account as well. I'm at John PR Evans. That's all one word. There you go. Cool. And Alex? You'll find me at, at Alex Hansford. And you can find me on at Holmster. That's H-O-L-M-E-S-T-E-R 79. Lovely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Alex, for your time. Thank you. John, thank you. It's great to have it, you back as well. It's been great fun. Thank you, chaps. Brilliant. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this. We hope you enjoy the film. Uh, just if, if you feel the need to abuse us on Twitter, please do. And we'll see you again next week. Thanks for your time. Good, good night.